important aspect of the protein folding and unfolding discussion that we had in class today about egg white. So you'll remember um, we were trying to, dis to, to understand the mystery of the egg. The mystery of the egg is the fact that when you heat an egg, um, it solidifies, whereas when you heat a normal material like um, water, say, it turns into a gas. And the question is, how can that happen? And what we argue today is that it happens because an egg is um, filled with a sea of proteins. So this, for example, shows you the proteins that are, um, that are present in egg white. And, um, and what happens is that when you heat the proteins up, the, um, the, they, they unfold. Um, and when they unfold, um, the, um, it so happens that you expose little bits of the proteins that were sticking to each other, which, which were sticking each protein to itself, which instead caused them to stick to each other. And that forms a network of crosslinks, which then um, is, is a solid. And um, we argued today in class that the major um, you know, interaction that was causing this stickiness um, of the egg proteins to each other um, was from hydrophobicity, and this is because of the amino acids um, that are in egg. Half of them um, roughly are, um, well, half of the different amino acids are hydrophilic, and the other half are hydrophobic. Actually, it turns out that in egg, about a third of them are hydrophilic, or, and the rest are hydrophobic, but it, it doesn't um, it really matter. This is a detail, and this was what we argued was the, um, the cause of the cross links. Now, you, you know that this can't be the whole story, and um, the reason from this, um, you, um, you can think about um, either by looking at recipes of eggs and finding other ways of cooking them, some of which we discussed in class, um, or even um, just from your lab in which um, you made cheese. This was the first lab of the year in which you made cheese, and you'll remember that you made it by heating up um, milk and then adding vinegar, adding an acid, and that caused um, the cheese to coagulate. You, you made, however, a phase diagram in which you, um, you showed the... Um, you showed when the coagulation happens as a function of temperature and pH, and what you discovered is is that even at room temperature, that is, you know, at 20 degrees or so, um, that is, if the uh, medium was acidic enough, it would still um, solidify. And this shows that actually the temperature is not the only thing that's needed to um, unfold um, proteins and cause coagulation, but pH also plays a role. And the question then is, how does pH fit into this picture? And um, what does that show that we're missing? Um, and I should say that this phenomenon, that is, the, the, the idea that pH matters, goes well beyond um, that of cooking eggs, you know, or cooking or making cheese. Um, for example, you know, there are meat dishes like um, ceviche, which is made out of fish, I mean, which you can actually cook fish by putting it only in acid, by putting it in lemon juice or something, and the fish will cook. And it's the same basic question, that there is some unfolding and coagulation and interaction that's happening um, because of the pH of the medium, and the question is, what is going on? So that's what I want to discuss. So um, the answer, um, you can see um, by simply looking at this chart that um, I showed you before. So I didn't emphasize this before. I emphasized that these were the hydrophilic amino acids and these are the hydrophobic amino acids. But in fact, the amino acids that are in this black box also have electrostatic charges. So the blue ones, that is aspartic acid and glutamic acid, are negatively charged, whereas the pink ones, arginine, lysine, and histidine, are positively charged. And because of this, if we go back to the picture that we used in class, to discuss the folding of a protein, where you will remember the, the black dots were hydrophobic and the white dots were hydrophilic. Now we have to put some small number of electrostatic charges on the protein, so the pluses are positive charges and the minuses are negative charges. And um, as is, we've discussed in this class before, positive charges repel, negative charges repel, but positive and negative charges attract. And this feature is going to affect the overall force balance that's causing um, proteins to be stabilized or not. So how can you think about this? Well, a simple um, way to think about this is just to take the protein and add up the total amount of charge that there is. So you simply take all of the amino acids and you can calculate, you know, just by counting how many positive and how many negative charges there are. So for example, on this guy, there are one, two, three, four positive charges, and there's one, two negative charges. So the net charge is two, and it turns out the electrostatic, you know, so this thing, these charges are going to try to you know, repel each other, so this electrostatic force is more or less destabilizing um, and tries to make the protein unfold. Um, and it turns out that the electrostatic energy um, depends on the square of the total um, charge, which is something that comes from basic physics. But um, so, just in broad brush, though, the idea that actually we really want you to understand is that in addition to the hydrophobic force, which is actually 
in general causing proteins to want to fold. Um, there um, is besides entropy, which wants to make it unfold, there's also electric static forces, which if it's big enough can make it unfold. And essentially what I'm going to tell you is that when you change the pH, you're enhancing the electrostatic interactions, thus causing um, them, the proteins to unfold. So, and the reason for this is just that the charge on the protein depends on the pH. So when I showed you before that some of the amino acids were positively charged, some were negatively charged, it turns out that the amount that they're positively or negatively charged actually depends on the pH. So this is something that you learn um, in chemistry and goes beyond the discussion that I want to have here, although if anyone is interested, we can talk um, more about that. But the, the net consequence of that is that if you take fish myosin, so if you take for example, a protein, the protein that's the dominant protein um, in fish, you can actually calculate um, how the net charge of that protein depends on pH. And what you see is that around pH 7 or so, you know, there's some charge. So that's neutral pH, um, you know, which looks like it's about minus 12 or something. But if you then put the thing in, a, in an acid, if you go down below a pH of 2 or something, the charge goes up to 20, which means that the, um, that the, electrostatic repulsion force that's, that, that um, is going to, to go up quite a bit. And if it's enough, um, you know, this will depend on the temperature, of course, then it can cause the protein to unfold, it can cause aggregation, and it will cause gelation. So, um, I mean, so I, I mean, if you were going to sort of guess when there might be an effect in fish myosin, you would guess that was when the, the charge went up as much as possible, which happens at around pH of 2, which actually, and I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, I'm sure this must be a coincidence, this is sort of remarkably close to the pH that's needed to cook ceviche, um, which, as I mentioned before, um, is what happens when you, um, is, is, um, is cooking fish basically in an acid. Um, so in the same basic deal you can do with an egg, so this is, the, um, this is one of the proteins that's in an egg, and you see around pH 7 the charge is pretty small, but it goes through the roof below a pH of around you know, 3 or 3.5 or so. And that sort of suggests if you go below that pH, um, that alone um, will cause the egg to cook. It's also true that if you make the pH positive, if you actually make the solution more basic, the same thing will happen. And indeed, this is the sort of thing that's going on um, in, the, in the century egg that, you will, that we talked about in the class. A anyway, so this is all to say that um, hydrophobicity is not the only factor that controls whether... Um, you know, whether proteins fold and unfold and causes the cross-linking electrostatic charges. The other important factor, and, and when you, whenever you cook and change the pH of the solution, um, then that's really what you are manipulating.